What's going on, everybody? Welcome back here to the Swim3 Sports YouTube channel. You guys are in for a treat. Today, we've got an interview lined up with PSN's Mark Masters. Really appreciate Mark joining us. You know, he's fresh out of the Edmonton bubble, World Junior Tournament, Leaf season starting up, Sense season starting up. Hockey is back, finally, in the nation's capital. So we are so excited to talk to Mark. Really appreciate him talking to us. You know, we're talking Tim Stutzla, Jake Sanderson, expectations for the Sens, Cup favorites, all that kind of stuff. It's a great interview. You aren't going to want to miss it, so make sure you stay tuned for this whole thing. Welcome back, everybody. We've got a special episode for you guys today. We're joined by a special guest from TSN, Mark Masters, fresh out of the Edmonton bubble back in Toronto. How's it going today, Mark? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm not too bad. Thank you. So it's kind of our little tradition here. Whenever we have an interview, we like to do a little quick rapid fire question, sort of just get you warmed up and ready to go, if that sounds good. Fire away. Perfect. So what's your favorite genre of music? Uh, genre of music? Uh, I'm not sure I have a favorite genre. Um, not a big music fan myself. I kind of, well, my wife says classic rock. So there you go. <laughs> she, she would know. So classic rock. Fair enough. And then do you have any favorite artists or no? Favorite artists? Okay. <laughs> uh, the guess who? BT. And then do you have any sort of like game day routine you like to follow? Sorry? Do you have any sort of like game day routine you like to follow? Game day routine? Nope. Just doing the work. There isn't to get there an hour early. Uh, be prepared. Um, not, not, you know, just the same old things. Uh, transcribe as much as you can. Uh, read as much as you can. Pretty much. Sure. It, you know, it's, it's been a while since I've had an NHL game day. <laughs> no, no just kind of going off the, the Hockey Canada game days I just had. So that's, that would be the plan. For sure. And then did you have a favorite team growing up as well? Uh, yeah, Maple Leafs, obviously growing up, going to games with my dad and uh, great memories of doing that. And uh, yeah, that's my earliest memories of being a sports fan. Awesome. And then did you have a favorite athlete? Favorite athlete? I was always a big Wendell Clark fan. Loved Fair the way enough. he played Fair the War 17 as a kid. Uh, heart and soul captain of the team. So always loved Wendell. Nice. I mean, big sense fan growing up, so I don't know if I agree with that one, but <laughs> definitely see where you're coming from. And then kind of getting into some more of our longer form questions. So how was your experience covering the World Juniors this year? And what was life like in the bubble? Oh, well, life in the bubble was good. I, I <laughs> Bubble life, is, I enjoyed it. Uh, meals were brought to our door in quarantine, and um, which so that made that easy. And uh, I'm pretty immersed in the work. So for me, the bubble was, was perfect, really. I mean, uh, just rank to the hotel. Uh, it keeps you focused in on what you're doing and uh, – I, I had no problem with that. It was a good experience for me. I was grateful for the opportunity. Obviously, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, and I know it took a lot of time and effort from Hockey Canada and a lot of people at the IIHF to have everything come together to get 10 teams there and to put on a, a one of an international sporting event. So I enjoyed my time there. Grateful for the opportunity. Uh, it's fun to be covering live hockey again. So I'm geared for up sure. now for, for the NHL season. Awesome. Then I also wanted to ask you, how did you first get into covering the World Juniors? How did that come to be sort of thing? Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm not 100% sure. I guess this was my ninth year doing it. So my first year was UFA in 2013. It was during the NHL lockout, so it wasn't like there was any Leaf stuff going on at that time. A lot of, you know, TSN brought a lot of people to Russia that year. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the decision making was. I think I you know, it went well that first year and I've been doing it ever since. So, uh, yeah, I'm just happy I get to do it, to be honest with you. Nice. I'm sure it's definitely quite the experience getting to travel all around the different countries and watch hockey sort of thing like that. Yeah. I would never have gone to Russia. I would have never gone <laughs> to Sweden, Finland, the Czech Republic last year was awesome. Uh, as part of the, as part of the, the camps leading into these tournaments, I've been to Vienna last year in the lead up to the, to the Czech Republic. So, um, you get to experience a lot of different stuff. You get to come together as a team. The TSN family is really tight. We do, you know, secret Santa uh, during the European trips and everyone's very close and it's a great team, right? Everyone's kind of elite at what they do. And um, so it's just cool to be around that and uh, tough, tough, tough at times to be away from home on, on the holidays, but uh, uh, TSN makes it really easy. So I, I'm grateful. I, I, I'm just happy they keep letting me do it. <laughs> For sure. And I think I kind of speak for a lot of people, especially in Canada. I think we've all kind of grown up watching the World Junior. So we're definitely grateful for all the hard work you guys do at TSN to make it such a special broadcast every year. But kind of more into this this year's tournament, I guess. So 
what was like how did this tournament compare for you then to other years past obviously it's a very different kind of experience with the bubble what were some maybe some positives some negatives you took away from this year's tournament well the positive is that it happened because not we weren't sure even in the days leading into the tournament germany had all those positives and sweden had a couple positives and there's always that question in the back of your mind that uh, would the bubble hold and it did and uh, you know you're tested daily and uh you know, it's, it's, there was, we're all wearing masks at all times, uh, unless you're in your room or on camera. So, uh, it was very different. Obviously we'll never have sure. a, hopefully we'll never have another world juniors like that. Uh, miss the fans for sure. Got to tell you, it was easy moving around the rink, uh, <laughs> going up and down because, you know, you could just leave your equipment. Uh, I know our photojournalists enjoyed the, I, you know, the ability to just leave our cameras set up in spots and not have to worry about, you know, tearing down and, made it easier in that regard but obviously you you miss the fans you know the energy in the building when Canada plays is is amazing I'll never forget Toronto uh, 2015 gold medal game and uh, the way that game started with Russia and uh, them scoring on the first shift Canada that Domi Reinhardt Duclair line just dominating and uh, that's my hometown so that was pretty special mm -hmm. for me just to be in that building it was electric and really fun to be there for that and uh so it was very different, very different. But uh, again, uh, there is a special, special kind of feel around the world juniors uh, because it's the holidays. And I think this year, because there hadn't been hockey in a while and that added to that. So it was different uh, in some not so good ways and uh, special in, in some other ways. For sure. And you kind of touched on it there briefly as well with team Germany and, you know, we haven't had hockey in a while. So since fans have been craving some hockey. And so with that said, what were your thoughts on Tim Stutzel's tournament? I thought he had a great tournament. I mean, he was on my all-star ballot. Uh, you know, you'd seen, we'd seen some video of him. We, we knew what he could do on the ice, but I was really impressed off the ice. Um, just interviewing him a number of times, because obviously he's the captain and star player on Team Germany. He was super polite, had to wait a couple times because the mix zone was small and um, just no, no, no arrogance or ego to him. So I was really impressed. He offered to help carry our equipment one time. <laughs> Nice. Um, just very, uh, yeah, down to earth guy. And then on the ice, just such a, there's an edge to him. Um, he, he, did, he, he did not want his team to, to use the, the quarantining, the positive test as an excuse. And he kind of willed them. I think, you know, you lose 16 two to Canada, that can be a real psychological blow to a team. And he wouldn't let them go down. And he was excellent on the ice, obviously, but he had an edge to him that I didn't know he had. And uh, I think Ottawa fans can be really, <laughs> really excited about uh, the kind of person and player that it looks like he's going to be. So that was, it was fun for me to get to know him a little bit in, in that regard. So you see the talent, you know, he's been taken high in the draft, but uh, to see him come out and kind of elevate his team around him and will have that will there was, was cool to see up close. I also kind of wanted to ask you if there's any moments like you mentioned off the ice that sort of stand out that you could, that you could possibly share with us as well. Well, it was Stutzla. Yeah, with Stutzla. Yeah, just just that he would carry our equipment and that he would wait, and uh, and he, he you know he you know he he just there was no pretense to him. So very down earth guy from from what I could could tell, and uh, was you know great to interview, uh, insightful. You know wanted to give you good answers, not willing to use the the Canada loss as an excuse uh, for the rest of his team. You know he said wasn't upset with Canada running up the score. He was upset with his team's performance. So very impressive young man that, uh, that, he, that Tim Stutzla. So Ottawa fans can be, can be pretty, uh, pretty happy with how he carried himself uh, inside the Edmonton bubble. That's awesome. Then moving on to the other sense prospect who kind of made some headlines at the tournament. What were your thoughts on Jake Sanderson? Well, I mean, he was a rock back there for the U S on defense, a very steady tournament. Um, you know, not the same flash and dash as some of their other players, but, I think some of us were questioning the American defense coming in. Would it be deep enough? And um, he was the front liner for them, a, a front liner for them. And I thought he played very well, especially in the gold medal game against a very skilled Canadian team. Didn't, didn't phase him at all. And I thought he made a great play to set up the Zegers goal, the second U.S. goal, which was huge um, by, uh, by holding the blue line. And yeah, I, 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 Sanderson was excellent. I thought it was a really good tournament for him. For sure. And then you also kind of touched on it there as well. In that gold medal game, you know, unfortunately, Canada wasn't able to capture the victory. USA was pretty heavy betting underdogs going into that game. Did you have any idea to be able to pull off such an upset? Well, yes. Um, the U.S. is a really good team. 
Mm-hmm. They, they were the underdogs for sure. I mean, Canada had been on this this incredible run, 41-4, in terms of outscoring their opposition, hadn't allowed a five-on-five goal, hadn't trailed uh, for a second in the tournament. So I think Canada was clearly a favorite heading into that game. But the U.S. hadn't lost since since Christmas night, and they had been building steadily throughout the tournament. And I think they had a lot of confidence and swagger going in. Uh, Trevor Zegers was having a really special tournament. Spencer Knight is an incredible goaltending prospect. Um, and so I, w- I wasn't shocked that, that it played out that way. It's one game, right? It's not a best mm-hmm. of seven series. So the Americans, I think Zegers set the tone with those comments before the game. So we're going to come in and they haven't seen anyone play like that, like us, you know, he's at a real team, but I think he, he kind of meant like a team that was going to, to grind them down low and force them out of their comfort zone in a way that they hadn't been previously. And that's what they did. And Canada responded eventually, but it was too late and they were down to nothing. And Spencer Knight was excellent. So uh, I wasn't shocked by the outcome. It's one game with junior players. Um, it can be devastating on one side and thrilling on the other. And that's what we saw. For sure. I think we definitely, all things considered, were able to get a pretty memorable tournament. And with that said, what do you think you'll remember the most from this tournament down the road? Whew. Well, I mean, it's still pretty fresh. Um, what will I remember most about the 2021 World Juniors? That's tough. That's tough to say. I mean, just kind of being back at work, I guess. It's mm-hmm. just was, hadn't been on a plane since March when I went to the, when I was on with the Leafs on a road trip in California. And the whole world changed uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the next <laughs> few months. So mm-hmm. for me, I'll just remember what it was like, the kind of feeling to check it back into a hotel, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just being on the road and being part of a team again. So, cause I don't know when we're going to, we're going to do that again, hopefully by the end of this season, maybe, but probably not probably more looking at next season, but uh, mm-hmm. that's probably, well, I remember the most is just kind of the feeling of getting back on, on the, on the, on the road. No, for sure. And then kind of moving into quickly, just some NHL questions as well. I know you've been covering the Leafs for quite a while now. So the Leafs heading into this season are the favorites to win the North division. What do you think they're going to need to do to actually win the division? And what do you think it will take for someone to knock them off? Well, what will, what will it need? What will they need to do to win the division is they'll, I think they are the most uh, just up and down the roster, probably the most talented team. If everyone plays to their potential, um, but what will they have to do? I mean, they'll need to treat the regular season a little differently than they've treated regular seasons in the past where it's felt kind of like they've been locked into a playoff spot behind Tampa and Boston. Mm-hmm. And there just, there hasn't been a ton of pressure outside of the first season of the Matthews Marner era where they were, you know, fighting for a playoff spot right to the end. So I think they, they want to set a tone and be a dominant team in the, in the regular season. And they've added a lot of players and, uh, that will be interesting, you know, just on their top two lines. You're looking at Joe Thornton on the left side there. Jimmy VC is a new player. Uh, Nico Lettinen on the back end. Uh, Wayne Simmons in as a depth role. And um, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting. A full year of Jack Campbell's the backup to Frederick Anderson. So many things will have to fall into place for any team. So the Leafs will have to play better, better throughout the regular season. And it's a bit of a cop out answer, I suppose. But that's, <laughs> that's the bottom line. And how does the mm-hmm. team beat them? Is well, there, there's good teams in the division. You know, Montreal, sure. I, I like the changes they made. Edmonton, they got arguably the two best players in the world. For sure. Uh, or two of the best players in the world. Uh, Calgary, I think they had Markstrom and Nett. Vancouver, we saw what they did last year in the playoffs. Um, Winnipeg, they got the best goalie in the league. So it's going to be a very competitive division. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there will be a level of parity there. Le- Leafs will be favored, but 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 not by a huge margin. And it's going to be interesting to see how quickly they gel 56 sure. games. It's going to be both a marathon and a sprint in a way. And uh, it's, it's going to be unpredictable in a way. So mm-hmm. hard, hard to, to pinpoint exact reasons how teams can finish ahead of one or, or the other, but uh, it will depend who plays up to their potential in very strange circumstances. Of course. And then, so being kind of from like out of the Sens market, I feel like you can provide maybe a little bit more unbiased opinion than us. What is your expectations for the Sens this season and kind of maybe the general feel about them around the league right now? Yeah, I think the feeling is that they've gotten a lot better, um, obviously from last season, that they're going to be a young, exciting team. Um, it's hard to judge growth. Obviously, the addition of Matt Murray is, is one that's everyone, you know, could pay off big, but also 
may not work out. And that's a pretty mm-hmm. big gamble. So I think we're all intrigued to see how that's going to work. That's probably the biggest gamble right there. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I saw, I saw in Toronto when they finished last one year and then the next year they had all this young talent come in and you're, you're looking at how, the, how quickly they will develop. Love the young talent. We already talked about Stutzla. We already talked mm-hmm. about Sanderson. Uh, I think they got some great pieces there. I love Brady Kachuk. Uh, Thomas Shabbat's a world junior hero legend, even though Canada didn't win that, that game, he was just such a stud back then that when you watch that, you're like, okay, this guy's going to be mm-hmm. good, really good. And it's turned out that way. So they're growing, they're growing. It's just, it's, it's, it's hard to judge how quickly they'll grow. Um, it's going to be fun to watch. I think what I would say to Sens fans is that it's going to be a fun ride, right? For sure. Uh, even if the team is, is, is not winning more games than, than they're losing, I think they're still going to be entertaining and it'll be fun to watch those young players grow. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we can maybe see a little bit more of a renewed battle of Ontario finally with maybe nine, 10 games against the Leafs this year, bring back some excitement to that rivalry. Yeah, it'd be fun. I mean, first TSN four game of the year is the battle of Ontario week, uh, the first week of the season that Friday. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I think everyone would love to see that a little, you know, a little fire there. Ottawa always sure. seems to play Toronto, even in the last few years where Ottawa hasn't been quite as good as, as Toronto, obviously, but uh, mm-hmm. they've seen to enjoy getting up for those games. So I'm looking forward to, to the battle of Ontario kind of ratcheting up and um, hopefully down the road, we'll see a playoff series again, because those were a lot of fun. My childhood, my growing up, years in school you know it was a lot of fun i went to carlton university a proud alumni uh, go ravens and uh, go ravens uh (laughs) and uh, i remember always uh the you know the first year 2004 was the last year toronto actually won a playoff series hard to believe my first year (laughs) at university and i just remember how much fun it was on campus my friends some were ottawa fans some were toronto fans watching those games so it was really cool so hopefully we get that in the coming years for sure. And then not to put you on the spot, but kind of just our last question for you. If you had to pick the way too early Stanley Cup favorite, who would you pick right now? <laughs> way too early, yeah. Um, well, geez, I mean, it's hard to go against Tampa again. Mm-hmm. But as we know, and as we've seen in the World Juniors, where there hasn't been a repeat champion since 2009, uh, and there's only 10 countries in that, and there's you know 31 in the NHL, it's probably going to get a new winner. Um, Boston's probably taking a step back a bit. The Stars kind of had a magical run. I'll go Colorado. If their goaltending holds up, I think they're the best team in the league. I think McKinnon's going to have a big year. Uh, their defense is just obscene. And I, we saw what Byron and even Justin Barron looks like at the World Juniors. Um, looks like Colorado's in good shape on the blue line for years and years to come. So if the goaltending holds up, and I think they'll figure that out, um, I think that Colorado will win the Stanley Cup this year. Yeah, that's my pick. Sure, I definitely think that we can definitely see. There's definitely some validity to that one. Colorado's putting something pretty scary together out there in Denver. Thankfully, you know, different divisions this year, so we'll get to see some more rivalries built like that. I think that's all the questions we have for you, though. Mark, really appreciate you joining us today, and thank you for taking the time to talk to us. My pleasure. Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you. Once again, huge thank you to Mark Masters for joining us. We really appreciate him taking the time to talk to us. You know, very busy schedule. It's at least season starting up. NHL's coming back. So we really appreciate that, of course. Make sure you guys go subscribe down below. Like this video. Go comment what you think about Mark's predictions and just all his feedback in general. Really appreciate everybody staying tuned with us so far. Don't forget to go check out facesmag.ca slash awards. Go vote for Sister Sports Best Blog. We're trying to catch a W, guys. We're trying to win. This is our victory, not just ours. It's everybody's. So make sure you guys go vote. Really appreciate that. Like we said, make sure you guys stay tuned. There's great content coming all through 21. Right yeah, I'm leaving. I saw me, man. I got diamonds, but they say that I don't need them. She gon' need me when she need me. I've been rolling through my thoughts, and you can.